Hey, this is Rob, and I have a quick Fusion 360 tip for you. Uh, I'm basically going to show you how to create a groove that will work for a specific retaining ring. So what are retaining rings, and why do we need them? If you look at this design, you can see there's a bottom component here, and a top component, and then a pin that goes through uh, holes in each of them. And if I turn on the joints here and uh, show you the movement that we're looking for, that's it. So in Fusion 360, joints basically eliminate different degrees of freedom. So this has eliminated all the degrees of freedom for this uh, part to move, except for rotation along the z-axis. So um, in real life, however, it, this, uh, this pin is fitting through holes in each of these components that's, that are slightly bigger than the pin. So it could either just fall out or... Uh, work its way out as this thing moves back and forth. So what we need is some way to keep that pin in place. And uh, I'll show you on the McMaster Car website by just going to insert McMaster Car component what some of the options are. So if that pin was threaded, we could use uh, lock nuts. And uh, these are nuts that go on the end and just stay in place. Some of them have a, uh, a nylon insert to uh, keep them from vibrating or moving off by themselves. Some other options are uh, maybe a cotter pin. So if you had a hole going um, you know, perpendicular to that shaft, you could put a cotter pin through it and then bend it and you'd have a way to keep that thing from falling off. There's also a cotter pin like this, a hairpin cotter that doesn't um, need to be bent. You just kind of press it on there. Uh, and there are some other options here as well. And then finally, I'll look at uh, retaining rings. And there are different options for this too. Um, the one I'm going to show you is this uh, standard just external retaining ring. It, it's made of spring steel and it has a special set of pliers that allow you to uh, kind of when you squeeze, they actually, instead of squeezing on the end of the pliers, they kind of pull apart. So that allows you to open this ring up uh, put it over the groove in the shaft, and then when you let it go, it snaps into place. And those are great. Uh, there's other options, too, ones that just slide on, so you don't need any special tool to do that, and uh, some other shapes. Um, uh, there are also, if you look under this category, so this is how the McMaster site works. If you click on push, it'll only show options down here that are push rings. And so um, you can see that there are different versions. This just pushes on, but it also allows you to put a wrench on there. Uh, they're kind the kind that just fit on the end by pushing them onto the end of the shaft. Uh, you'd see this maybe in like a, a kid's wagon or something to keep the wheels on. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that push filter and uh, just choose retaining rings because that's the kind we're interested in. We're only interested in the kind that fit on the outside of the shaft. And I'm going to choose standard here. Then I know the shaft or the, the pin that I have is in inches and it's three eighths of an inch in diameter. So I'll choose that. So now what the website's done is it's kind of filtered it down to a list here of different options that match all my requirements. And all of them ha have uh, a specific kind of groove that they want to fit into. So this is showing me that I can choose ones that either fit this diameter groove or uh, this one and the width of the gro grooves is here. So I'll just choose a specific one, let's say that first one there, and it tells me that this is designed for a groove that is 0.352 inches in diameter and 0.029 inches wide. So I'll click on that part number, choose product detail, and then uh, scroll down here and make sure this says 3D step, and then hit save. And then I'll just insert that uh, clip or that retaining ring right into my model. So I'm just moving it into a kind of a convenient location off to the side and I'll hit capture position here so that Fusion 360 remembers that as its initial starting point. It's just easier than having it in that strange default location. So now what I need to do is figure out how to make a groove that matches what the McMaster car website said I need. And that's kind of what this tip is. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to create a kind of a cutting tool. And I don't necessarily want that to be a component. You can see I've done a pretty good job here of making each individual part of the design a separate component. And then the retaining ring even comes in as a component. And the name of it is actually the McMaster car part number, which is pretty cool. But um, what 
what I'm trying to do is just make something that's kind of like a temporary tool that I'm using in Fusion 360. It's never anything that I'd actually make in real life, so I'm not going to create a component for it. I'll just start by creating a cylinder, and it'll be a body that just sits in the bodies folder under the main component. So I'm going to hide this other stuff just to make it a little easier. Uh, I want to make this cylinder on the front work plane, and I will make its diameter really anything. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to make it an inch. That's not the important part of this process. So there we go. The height, however, is really important. This is the width that McMaster Carr said the groove should be. So that was 0 0.029 inches. And I'll hit OK. The next step is to create a hole in the center of this. So I'll go to Create, Hole. And uh, this is always tricky, but I wanted to create it on that face. And uh, there we go, that was easy. So I want it to be a hole in the center of that uh, ring. And the depth, you know, the depth should just, it should cut all the way through. And uh, I can I can either uh, click the back face here to make sure it goes all the way through, or I could just uh, maybe choose uh, all for the depth. And then uh, the diameter, this is really important too. The diameter has to be uh, the diameter that McMaster Carr said. So it was 0 0.352 inches. That was the diameter of the groove. I'll hit OK. And hmm, what happened there? OK, it didn't like that. I don't know why. Let's see. Let's try that again. I'll swipe up to repeat the hole. Sometimes the order that you do this in matters. Uh, it's kind of the, the whole command is not not great. Um, so let's try that again. I will click the center and I'll say it should go all the way through and the diameter is 352. Let's hit OK. Work this time. OK, so now that's totally finished and what I'll do is actually rename this to uh, retaining ring cutting tool and I'll turn on the components again. So what I'm looking to do here, actually I'll turn on some of the components. What I'm looking to do here is have this um, move this cutting tool into position wherever I want the groove, and then I'm going to combine them using the uh, combine operation. So you'll see that in a moment. I'll hit M for move, and what I want to do is move this body, so I'll click it, but I'm going to choose point to point. And this will allow me to move it exactly where I want. So I'll choose the back surface here, hold down Command, and that will allow me to click on the center of that back surface. And then over here, I can easily just click uh, on the center of the end of that uh, pin. So you can see what it's done. It's put it right in position at the end of that pin. I'll turn on the bottom again so you can see um, the next step is to just move it into position. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. But uh, if you had a specific distance, you could, you could make it happen this way too. So I'll hit Translate next and just move it along that axis. And 0.2 inches should be fine. So I'll hit OK. And now this uh, this is the important part. I'm going to use that tool to cut the uh, pin. So I'll hit Combine. The target body is the pin. The tool body is the cutting tool. And I'll make sure it says Cut here and Keep Tools because I want to keep using this uh, cutting tool. So I'll hit OK. Now if I hide it, you can see it's created a uh, groove. It's exactly the groove that we needed according to McMaster Carr. And I could verify that if I wanted to use the inspect tool. I can see uh, right in here what the diameter is, and it's 352. So that's exactly what we needed. I could also um, look at the distance between these two. I don't even need to go into the inspect tool for that. I can just click on this edge and then hold down shift, click that edge, and we can see down in the corner that it's 0 0.029, which is what we needed. So it worked, and maybe the next step is to just do the same thing on the other side. I'll turn that back on and move it into position over there. I'll click this, and um, you know I'll do the same thing. I'll just uh, what I'll do is use point to point, hover over this face, and hold down Command so that it stays on that plane, and click the center. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'll just click the center of the pin, and you can see it's positioned it just like it did before. And then I'll use Translate to just move it over 0.2 inches. Hit OK, go to Modify, Combine, and do the same thing again. Cut this with this, and hit OK. So I'm done with this retaining ring for now, and you can see that it's, um, it's done exactly what I need. And I'll show you how to put this on here right now. So um, the way that, you know, I could use the Move 
command and move this into place but really what I want to do is join the two so I'll create a join and uh, it's going to be a rigid joint you know technically this could spin in there but what happens is when you put this retaining ring on it expands and it snaps on here and it's pretty tight so it doesn't spin uh, so a rigid joint makes more sense so I'll click on this component and I'll do the same thing I just did with the move I'll hover over this face hold down command and make sure I get the center of that Ooh, that's tricky there we go the center there and then I'll come over here and on the wall of my groove I'll hold down command and click its center uh, it didn't quite work let's see if flip okay so flip fixed it and um, so that's it it's in position and if I hit OK I'm all done now there's something interesting to know here if we look back at the uh, specifications for this particular retaining ring you can see that the groove diameter is 0.352 inches and the inner diameter of the ring is 0.338 so it's actually the ring is actually smaller than the um, than the groove that we made and so that's you know technically a problem in in the model but in real life it's because it springs open and snaps back and, and uh, fits tightly on there if you want to see what I mean you can go to uh, section analysis and if we look at this really closely we can see that actually there's some overlap here so it's hard to tell but uh, we can see that this ring is actually overlapping uh, and kind of cutting into the uh, there we go that's kind of a better view so it's kind of cutting into the shaft which shouldn't really be happening and another way to do that is if you go to inspect interference we can click on that ring and that pin and when we compute, it tells us there's actually some part of these two that are overlapping. Like I said, that's, uh, that's just the way it looks in the model, and that's how it'll have to be, unless you wanted to create your own pin that, that worked properly. But uh, the reason is that this, in real life, springs open and springs shut around that, um, around that shaft perfectly. So uh, the last thing I want to show you is if I hide this, um, maybe I've decided I want to use a different uh, a different retaining ring and um, if we look back at McMaster I think um, you know what I'll look back for you uh, three so another one another possibility is that the diameter is three four three instead of three five two so this is really easy now to fix that all I'd have to do is uh, look at my retaining ring cutting tool and um, go back in time to where I made that hole if I click on this it'll actually show it down there uh, in the timeline and so I can double click on that whole feature and say, oh, instead of 352, it's supposed to be uh, 343. And when I hit OK, what's happened is uh, if I turn all this back on, uh, it, it actually has adjusted all of the grooves to be the right size. Because I went back in time and adjusted the size of that cutting tool, uh, anything I did after then... Um, using it as a cutting tool has reflected that change. So this is pretty nice if you had lots of retaining rings all over the model and uh, you wouldn't have to go back and change any of them. You just change the cutting tool and it sort of, uh, when it goes back through the timeline to the present, uh, it'll, it'll recalculate all of that. And so one last thing I'll show you is that if we went back to uh, back in time, right after I made the hole in that uh, retaining ring cutting tool, I'll hide this other stuff. What I could have done is maybe um, add another feature to it. So uh, maybe there's actually a cutout in that groove so that it looks different. Or maybe, um, I guess maybe the easiest change to make is to add a chamfer. So I'll add a chamfer to each of these. And I'll just make it like 0.01 inches. So there's a different shape here now. And when I hit OK and go back to the future, uh, should be able to see that it's made a, a groove of a different style now. So, and, and of course that happens on, on both of these. There it is. Something happened here. I'm not sure what, oh, that, that rigid joint somehow is broken, but I can fix that. So, uh, that's about it. I just wanted to show you that you can uh, use this body to create a cutting tool and of course, this would apply to lots of different things. But uh, in this specific case, it's about making a groove for a retaining ring and then being able to go back and modify that cutting tool and have it uh, 
through this you know design history feature the fa fact that this is features based modeling uh, that change that you make when you go back in time will be reflected in all the places that you've used that tool afterward so I hope that helps and um, thanks